8. Zook relaxes in the car on the long trip back to the city, thinking about what the puzzle is. He wonders if something is going on back at that farm, but does not have too much time to worry about it. This one who is in the city so far needs to be caught. It is likely one of their enemies within the Fang that escaped their attack some time ago. They struck out at a set of other vampires and ghouls that were trying to sneak in for power in the city. The Fang often did this sort of thing, perhaps a step ahead of them now. Zook gets a notification on his phone, an email from the eccentric hacker that he sent the messages to, which took him about 30 minutes to check the info. The message replies to him is from the email that he sent to Mikola, and it states that it is from the same IP address that is from a few of the emails, meaning likely the same computer and an internet connection, more from a few older ones, but it helps him gauge what might have been happening, and he will let him in on what might be happening at the next gathering. Mikola is not sure if he got any notification about tonight's meeting earlier this morning, but the magicians have made contact and they are not thrilled. Zook checks other messages and sees an email from Zant, it states that they have a meeting close to one, and most better damn well be there, or she will have to hunt for them, and she does not want the unpleasant actions of having to do that. If you are not extra dead, be there. He replies that he should be able to make it. They need to get more powerful weapons against enemies like these. They are tough because a powerful fang fighter was able to go up against the werewolf, muscle to muscle. They need gear like sunlight flashlights, which sadly don't exist, flamethrowers, swords, or werewolf claws that were not going to cut it with what they have. They did drop many of their number that night, and he is wondering if they need the special things, stuff that hurt them as well. No one likes using it, but the powerful enemy has skin with the consistency of concrete, and has the supernatural muscle to compete with an angry werewolf. They need more, taboo gear. They seem to be partially distracted, something else must be going on, this woman who used to be fed on was kept, like fresh takeout, and she was not really this important, but we are all trying to figure out what might be happening with her, running around trying to find out the situation. If it was up to him, this was a distraction, and they were falling for it. In his head, they probably need to get back in the game. They cannot get the wolves into things easily, and they need weaponry and knowledge. He would reiterate their situation if nothing else came up at the meeting, they should be preparing for more, but he is not sure what exactly, other than they should be preparing to handle the powerful fighters of the Fang. He gets home and gets out of the car, and Bud gets out at about the same time, but Bud closes the door a couple of seconds quicker than his boss and looks over with a strange look. Boss, you okay? Sure Bud, just thinking. Zook calls back, and shuts his door. They walk in, and Zook walks to a guest bedroom to change, he doesn't need to walk to his man cave to change if he is not going to stay put, it is an extra hundred yards or so to get down there, and he is just getting out of wrinkled clothes from the car trip, and dressing presentably so that he would not get strange looks at the gathering. He gets out of the room and says hi to his new pet cat, Fluffers looks at him. Take me with you, non-human, this other human is just walking around, and he won't let me go outside when he goes outside, it is getting boring. Using his blood power to speak to the cat. Sorry Fluffers, I will get you a friend to play with and I might even try to show the man you were with how to be able to talk to you, and if we get another friend for you. It is not an easy thing to teach. Do you need anything? Oh really, you can do that? No, I just can't get out there, you don't have any mice around here to try to pounce on, when can I get out more? When I say it is safe again, you cannot go outside, there are bad people, could be the other non-human also that is trying to find you, I want you to be safe. You're human, her name was Jessica, do you remember that name somehow? Not really, that sort of thing does not matter to me, other than she was a nice lady. Zook doesn't think it would make a difference, he just wants to see what she might be able to let him know. That is okay then Fluffers, I will be back in a little while, I need to see more non-humans like me. He calls out in human talk. Hey bud, 
let us head off. They both get in the car and leave for the gathering at the dance studio, and get there as others are pulling up. Zook looks around the room searching for anything new, and he found three new faces. Two of them look down at a book, one with them watching like a hawk. They were sitting at his usual table, but he decides to give them their space, and figure out what everything is about for the night, instead of meeting new people, he isn't thrilled with new people. It is close to gathering time and there seems to be a sort of anxiety in the room, and the new faces were adding to it. Zant calls from her figurative throne on stage, with a little more force than usual. Everyone, please, be on your best behavior now, we have some honored guests. Magicians from the city where Alisan is from, the woman was taken. They want to speak to us and believe that their situation is more important than what we are up to. You have the floor. She waves over to the new group in Zook's usual section, and the two in books close them, and they all stand, nearly in unison. The more seemingly important one speaks for the group, a man who is in a collared shirt and jeans, over this time, he is walking towards the stage, raising his voice after each point he is trying to make. Hello, the name is Cliff, we are wondering why you all have not put more of a priority in finding our blood kin Ali San. She has been missing for some time, and I hear that you have been playing catch up trying to keep a dead woman off of the radar of the populace. One of ours is certainly much more important than a human who is not obviously killed by one of our kind. Ali San is a very important member of our blood, and you should be spending much more time and resources trying to find her. Finishing his statement, his voice is pretty loud, he is standing nearly in front of the stage with many to be able to see, and has all of the room's attention. Zant looks back at him, she noticeably grips her armrest with her one arm and many in the room can hear a growl coming from somewhere, being it from the magicians or the boss of the group that, owns the city. She answers with a growl back at Cliff. We have put as much effort as, your family has. We have not heard from you over this time. What, do you not care as much to find her either? We have not been able to break the one person we have been able to stop from killing ourselves, and she has not been in a good mood. Her blood is thick so she is not easy to use mental blood powers on, she is tough to break, and we would rather not kill her by breaking her body, even though she seems to enjoy some of it more, we can't easily go further without breaking her body apart. You have someone you say that might know information, good, we can likely do better than some of yours to break her mind, we have ways of making someone talk. With the purposes of mind manipulating powers, we can likely outmatch whomever you have within the city, since we have not heard whether you have an elder living here. Your mind manipulation can match those of elder blood? Is one of you an elder with such ability? You should have said earlier. This victim is not exactly a priority, but she has been a project for us to try to figure something out. One with a book still in his arm says. He told you, we have ways. Zant smiles at the turn of events. Good, you have something to occupy your mind, any news on the woman? Anything on who, where, or how? Zook waits for about ten seconds or so, to see if anyone stands, then he does. Yes, we have found out a few things, we know her name is Jessica Sanderson, which might have been from the necklace that we have not been able to find imprinted on the muscle of her neck, we do not know why she was killed yet, but it was no accident of feeding, it seems more like someone was covering their tracks. I got some emails from her keeper, simplified as S, and got emails to Mick. He points out the known vampiric hacker in the city, who stands up quietly with a short wave, and sits back down, known to be shy. Mick was able to figure out that the emails also came from a vineyard which has become a sort of farmer's market a couple hours outside of town, but it doesn't seem to be a haven or anything, but more of a hideout, humans run the place, I didn't really search around, but someone might have been hiding, I need backup if we might need to get back there, who knows. I am still on that situation. I have some new possibilities when it comes to why. In this case, though, we do need to try to help find Allison, and I have been trying to help with the Fang member. We only know a short version of her name, Mel. She is in one of Zant's places, kept up under guard, lock, and key. Anyone have anything else? 
With no one else raising any further bits of information, she directs Luke to show the magicians where she keeps Mel, and hopefully a new set of information if these guys were better at it than him. It is not a pride thing with him, if these guys can do magic blood stuff, that is cheating, he has been working on this Mel for a while now, and he can't get through to her, even after removing her legs. Zook offers his car to take them on the trip, but their own ride pulls up, and they have what they call preparations to make if they were going to be manipulating the mind of a powerful vampire. Zook says they can just follow his car to Zant's property then, the one where they are keeping the source of information. It is about twenty minutes from the dance studio, but Zook is pretty eager to see a possible fear in the eyes of the woman who is so smug, she figures she has seen and done it all in the ways of torture, and no one can break her, Zook hopes these magicians could. During the car ride, Zook texts his retainer back at home asking what is going on with the cat but does not get a message back quickly. They make it to one of Zant's homes, park outside, and Zook is known by the guards, and they are able to walk in and to the basement of cells where some prisoners are kept. Only one of them has an occupant though, the one with, Moaning Mel, her nickname by some of the guards, that nickname given to her by continually calling out in a wail that she is so bored and asking for someone to eat to pass the time. She is moaning, when Zook, walks up. Ah, one of my other keepers, did you bring some friends? He answers with a smile. No Mel, I brought some friends of someone that I'm pretty sure your old friends have, and they want a few words with you. I told you, you cannot break me, I'm only a little uncomfortable with my arm up like this, could you not just? Her eyes widen as she sees some unknown people walk into her cell, she is resting on the bed and twists her body to where she can sit down. She had one arm left, her legs and one of her arms were removed, during the, enhanced, interrogation. Initially, it took Zook removing her legs to tell them how to do something, something important for the wolves to become allies. He slowly did fingers one by one, hand, then most of her left arm, but she still would not break. Her arm is in a shackle away from her body against the wall. Like she said many times, even during the interrogation, there is more to torture than just removing parts, and showing your willingness to do so. It took heart, no pun intended. Zook gets a text from Steve, who rarely texts him. Boss, the cat is making some strange noise. He texts back, to find out what she wants. The visitors walk into the cell nonchalantly and watch her eyes. Woman, you will tell us anything we want to know. One of them, the speaker known by Zook as Cliff, speaks for the group, looking at her, and he sees her smug look back. Go, F. Her head is shaking left to right, then. Go. F. She cannot seem to say it, as her mind is saturated in manipulation, she has been beaten, broken, and now her mind is no longer her own. Cliff is a serious speaker. You will tell us the truth, where would your master among, the Fong, take a prized possession? Where would he take our magician bloodkin that you helped capture? Belle hesitates to answer, her mouth shivering, quaking, trying to not reveal what she knows. You will tell us eventually, you might as well spill it, woman, where did you take her, when you captured her from the storage facility massacre? Mel holds out as long as she can, somehow having some strong mental defenses, but she seems to be no match, under the current scrutiny of the multiple beings from whom she's drawn attention. She stresses her mind, thinking of numbers over information, letters over locations, but her mind keeps showing a sort of bunker. She keeps it from her mouth though, thinking that she could still prevent them from knowing where they might find her master and his prizes. One of the members who is not the center of attention asks. What prizes, show us? Mel's eyes widen further, as she realizes she is being hit on multiple fronts, by the blood powers in the room, one seems to be manipulating her mind to think in certain directions, another is reading her mind while another is able to see images. 
She tries to close her eyes to prevent the manipulation, but her eyes are forced open with the powers, unable to break the strength, seeming to be very strong. Her mind goes to find ways to end the boring nights of waking up for no reason but goes back to the old bunker, where her master has taken up residence, it is a secret place, and her mind continues to try to block the location. Speak woman, tell us the truth, where can we find this bunker? Mel holds out for another couple more seconds, but cannot resist. There is still an old-fashioned general store, called Mix's General, about an hour south of here. There is a bunker entrance with radiation symbols, but it is a front, not that it would affect us anyway. Rooms have been refit to cells where some are held. I do not know of them all, but I know that my master has been able to take a shadow master to teach him a few things, and the magician he has wanted for some time. Her magic is more coveted than anything else, it is well known, the magicians, in the Fang, have not been able to survive these centuries from their betrayal and our infighting, but with one we will finally be able to get the blood magic back and gain supremacy once again. Mel's head drops in shame, having lost most of her leverage, and feels defeated. With the one still in her head, he sees the multiple possibilities that she will use to try to end herself. Not that she has lost, but that she has not dared to end it already, and she can. The one in her head sees that she can manipulate her hand that she has left and reach into her body with the blood she has left and shove her rib cage into her heart. She can slap herself forcing her skull into her brain, she could. We need muscle in here. Calls out the one in her head, one of the guards comes in with a gun at the ready. We need someone on suicide watch, she will try to end it, and she knows she has betrayed her organization. We need better chains and a more uncomfortable setup for her. Bind her arms, keep them away from her body, she can shrink them, so we need to figure out. Good night all, it has been boring. Mel passes out. The one in her head stops his instructions. Well, damn it, her mind has shut down, she has put herself into the deep sleep, practically killing herself. Each of them, other than the guard that came in with a gun at the ready, knew what she did. She has shut down her body, unable to wake up the next night, or the next. Zook is still there, being more of a fly on the wall than a part of the interrogation, asks. Do you know of any way to reverse this? Can we wake her up again? I know that shocking her or adrenaline to her heart are not going to do it, do you have any blood magic ways to do that? No. We know of no such way to jumpstart her again, she has set her mind to it, and we have no way of knowing when she will wake up, that is if we allow her to wake up again. There is no way she can hide this from me. When she shut her mind down, I lost connection and not only cannot feel resistance in her mind, I feel nothing to try to break into, her head is a blank slate and I cannot see a thing. She was forced to give us something before, but now when I disconnected from her mind, she was able to think for herself and thought to shut herself down. What we have found out over many studies over the centuries, those of our kind that are heartless, closer to their vampiric spirit than others, seem to be stuck in this state longer than others. In this woman's mind, I could tell there were many things she has done in the decades that she has not regretted. In her boredom here, she replayed some of her experiments over and over, I could see a few before we even started digging in. If she shut herself down, it could be a few days, but much more likely, it could be a couple of hundred years. We have had bored criminals, or those who have trusted our blood kin to watch over us over time, we found that part out over many tests. Zook pulls out his phone and does not see a text back from his retainer, then sends back a question mark, a usual note asking about anything new from the message he sent. This is also a usual reply from either Bud or Steve to let him know what might be happening, and to most often reply as soon as available. He next messages Zant. We got information from her, but she fell asleep, we'll update soon in person with the others. On the way back. They return to the gathering, and most are still there chatting, or on the phone with their contacts trying to prevent important messages from getting out about them. The cops and media are trying to get out info, 
and they know who they should be calling before, that happens. A few more on their computers either emailing around or just playing a game on them. Zant has someone whispering into her ear as Zook is walking to the stage with the magicians. We found a location to check, but the source put herself into, the deep sleep, and it is verified by this guy over here. Pointing at one that kept hold of his book, even though he didn't seem to need it anymore. This surely didn't seem like a fantasy hardback book, it is an old-fashioned leather-bound book with no title. Zook continues. She is basically useless to us anymore, or she probably is for decades, might as well get rid of her. South of here, there is a general store, Mixes General, from what we heard about, one of those small out-of-the-way places. There is a bunker there where the Fang has taken residence. Most of us should try to help her, this is another attack, but they likely lost many of their numbers weeks ago, this is an out-of-the-way place, not sure if the big guy lives there, or if it is for the organization, but we should not underestimate it. We should watch it at least a night to see if we can see any activity, then breach to free at least Allison. We were also shown that there could be a shadow master down there, so not sure if we could get any of their help, but it could get us a favor if we do release one. Petey, we need your help. Petey walks forward a bit shy, and states shyly as well. Finally, we are getting some recognition. Petey, you have a chance to redeem yourself when trying to help Alisan like last time. We need you to take a few mystically hiding them and check out the place, tomorrow night, get there as early as you can, do you have any setup to get you somewhere? We can get you a hotel room as close by as possible, do you have a protected car? To get there at sundown? No, I don't usually do that sort of thing, but I can hide more than myself using the blood power to do so. Zant resolves to help. Fine, I'll get you a protected car, and driver so that we can get some of us on this. Does anyone else want to watch the place? We need a little muscle and a few more who can watch the place with observational blood powers, we know they can hide since one was able to escape the end of the storage unit massacre. The rest of us need to prepare weaponry better than wolf claws, stuff that we would rather not use, but we must now. We need a couple of ghouls trusted enough to handle Molotov cocktails and maybe even flame throwers. this is more important than the rest. Lighting them on fire might help us drop them, but we need to keep it off of us as well. Becca stands, as one of the muscled volunteers, and Paul suggests he should probably go as well, as a fast and observant member, another one of Petey's kin would go who is pretty good at watching, but not as good as Petey at hiding others, one of the magicians also said that they would be part of the group to observe the place, it is one of theirs that they were after as well. That forms up a few to watch the place for the next night. Zant has another point. Rachel, closest hotel. Rachel the record keeper is clicking away, she finds a hotel close by, not fancy but it would work, and hopefully they wouldn't be noticed. Zant has her reserved two rooms on one of her cards for tomorrow and next night, they would have ghouls pick up the room keys the next day, get them to stay the day to watch the place, and get back there before it gets too late, in their case, early in the day. Everyone, hunt or feed as needed, if you need help let me know, you'll need blood as a just in case and you better not be thirsty watching the place. Keep your mind on the ball, watch and learn, and do not in any way strike. If you see anyone, including their major fighter whoever that was, stay hidden, get us any information you see, keep phones on silent, and if you get caught, get out, don't kill if you don't have to. Becca, the magician going, and Petey walk up to Zant asking for help for blood for the night, they do not know if they usually would hunt, but the magician being from out of town, doesn't have much time, so the rest seem to have things covered and would meet at Zant's place before night's end so that they could be transferred to the location motel close by so that they could get to the location as soon as possible. They disperse the gathering, and might not meet the next night due to a few of them being in the field. <laughs>